All right, this is my third attempt at this um, development process video. The issue was that I was actually um, not putting my webcam in the corner the last time I tried. And I will fix this now. So now I'm just in the corner, like you would expect. Okay, um, yeah, so the things I want to show you um let's see if there are some modulations going on at the moment no so one of the things i want to show you is that i improved the smoothing modulator uh, before it was just an edgy thing that always had 100 percent width and now it yeah you can set the width to zero so it's mono and, or some other value and then it will more and more have an independent uh curve interesting when you get very close to mono then then you uh, get these fluctuations which are probably very useful for a lot of musical stuff and the hundred person stuff is some more drastical stuff i know and but it gets all um, relatively smooth when you dial in the smoothing and it does not go so far away from each other anymore because it sometimes does not manage to just get away so much when all the values kick in and stuff and yeah that works really well as you can see now another problem that i had um so the the second stuff the second big stuff that i made was i improved the um, parameter system if you noticed um that i always in my videos put things on this or the, the lower parameter and ask yourself why then i can tell you the reason was that it was not possible to put stuff on the other parameters the reason for that was very simple um there is in my modulation matrix thingy there is this process block method it is the general thing that calculates everything about parameters and modulators before the rest of the plugin is calculated and stuff so what it essentially does is um, f for each parameter it processes the thing with um, the parameter smoothing and everything and then it goes to the mod modulators um, processes the modulator onto a block of audio and then all the destinations from the modulator to some parameters or other blocks um, are being processed so that the modulator basically sends all its information to the parameters now you can imagine that if you try to modulate let's say w with this modulator try to modulate this parameter that would make no sense because um, while looping through the modulators this thing has already happened and then this thing comes and modulates this parameter but but this parameter will not be used anymore after this modulator so basically the sequence makes it, makes it impossible to um, to sort of do this and then I thought to myself yeah well what if we just um, change the sequence of the modulators to each other without showing the user but just internally so that the user doesn't have to think of it the user just doesn't just thinks yeah I want to modulate this thing with this thing and then it would automatically do the cool stuff in the background so that the user does not have to learn about that and in normal cases where the sequence is already working then that would work anyway so what I did is I added to my add destination function this loop here where I said yeah let's go through all the modulators let's open the visuals for that again let's go through all the modulators let's say I'm dragging this thing so we go through it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and now we see, oh yeah, 6. That is, hmm, the mod at 6 is the same as this modulator. It's the same. So let's go into this thingy. And then, um, of course, um, this whole method is only started when I drop this thing on another parameter. So let's say I drop it on this parameter. So the next for loop goes through the modulators again and for each modulator it asks is um, 
is the, the other mod not this mod? So we go through it. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in case of 6, we would notice um, this is the same mod. So let's not do whatever we want to do with this line. Because obviously if I drag this to this parameter, it will make no sense. So, um, so it wouldn't make sense to even be able to do that. Actually, I have to change my code a little bit, I just noticed. Because in that case, it should not even be possible to add the destination. But anyway, um, at least it would not work to process it um, already. And yeah, so where, where was I? Yeah, I added this virtual method uses parameter for all the um, modulators. So let's go to the general modulator thing and see uses parameter, give it a parameter identifier and it, it basically returns false on default because I thought to myself there could be modulators that don't even have any parameter and they would just um, send false by default but every other parameter like the macro would um, say yeah um, I return whether or not this parameter is the parameter ID and of course that's the same for the other parameter um, the other modulators but if they have more parameters then the statement is a little bit longer of course and that way it will always be able to check um, which uh, parameters belong to it so let's say I'm dragging this thing to this parameter and now we loop through it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we are at 5. And there we ask, yeah, do you have this parameter? And this modulator says, yep, I have a parameter that is called LF arrays. What should we do? And the answer is we check if t is bigger than m. And you see t is 6 and m is 5. So t is in fact bigger than m. So we actually swap the modulators in the vector and then we return and else we uh, don't swap the modulators and return so that's how I fixed the issue and it works very well as you can see it um, really does the thing that you would expect from it the problem is just that if you now went ahead now you you, you know internally this is 6 and this is 5 now what happens if you take this and go onto this parameter um, it will swap the thing back but at the moment it will not delete the old modulation you will still see it but it does not do anything anymore as you can see because it would not make sense for it to do things but now this thing does its thing and it does make sense so that this is still a little bit looking a little bit confusing more confusing than it should and I have to fix it also, there are some other issues. I can demonstrate you one of them. Boom. Uh, so yeah, it is still very error prone everything. And it's not getting better if I add more features. But I, I'm very careful and I want to improve everything to the point where I feel like this thing is safe for users. And yeah, that, by the way, that was not a threat safety issue. That was an lim out of bounds limit thing. And it's probably easy to fix, I just have to do it, but I only found it when I made the last attempt of this video, so I didn't have to find a time to f um, find out what it was actually yet. But yeah, it's probably simple. The only thing that matters and, and the thing that, we, that you should take away from this video is that I'm very far with this modulation stuff already and that I want to go on with more modulation stuff I want to add more modulators I want to improve uh, everything I want to um, get rid of bugs there are some details that I need to make better because you know the workflow is the most important and even the the littlest details could people leave wondering why would anyone make it like that and um, that is very reasonable and that's why I need to fix it yeah, and at the end I will put this into Nell.
so that so that you essentially have um, a plug-in in your hands that is meant as a vibratum while using a delay but can also be can also go in slightly different directions sort of it will still have its vibrato identity but I plan on adding this modulator system so that it can essentially be some other stuff as well like um, you know this randomizer it is almost like the modulator in Nell so basically if you use just this thing on the delay then it will be the same but now with this normal oscillator thingy it is also possible to get a traditional vibrato plug-in sound and with the envelope follower you can get a vibrato sound that I can't even predict any uh, already it's probably cool and yeah I won't go into detail with the other ideas yet uh, because I, I feel a little bit bad um, about all about only talking about my modular system all the time because I know I, I got some viewers who actually told me that my stuff is interesting and I don't want to bore you with all uh, the, the same te uh, topic all the time I actually want to go back to more DSP related topics at some point but you know it's kind of frustrating that I can't make an update to Nell if this thing is not done so I really need to hurry up and get it to a point where I feel like that's pretty cool so I can actually go on with other stuff I want to go into filter design more and all the really mathy stuff that everyone is scared about um, but I can't because no time and yeah university is also a lot in l uh, lately of course but I will sort this out and then it will be very cool and I wish you a nice time until my next video